<clears throat> Jamila. <laughs> you are good to go. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so. <clears throat> Welcome to We Talk Life to Radio, an intimate portrait about human life and how we set out to change the world from our own perspectives. I'm your host, Tori Sands, and I'm joined with my co-host today, Crystal Hall, Randy Savagey. Did I say it right? Savagery. Savagery, right? Right? Okay. And also Autumn Smith Jimenez, right? All right, we got it. So welcome everybody to our first episode. We appreciate you guys for joining us. And uh, hopefully uh, today this podcast will leave, <laughs> will actually teach you guys um, how we can learn, we can all learn, live and thrive off of each other, of course, by sharing knowledge through our conversations. I'm really excited today because our guests, we have some very special women here today. Um, who have a story to tell, a story that is, I think, often like you know, a lot of people, you know, just don't feel comfortable talking about um, because of ignorance. And of course, today's topic, we're going to talk about the trans community. And I want to just say this real quick before we get into it. For the transgender people, um, they come from every region of the United States and around the world, from every racial and ethnic background and from every faith community. Transgender people are your classmates, your coworkers your neighbors, and your friends. With approximately 1.4 million transgender adults in the United States and millions more around the world, chances are that you've <laughs> met a few, quite a few, of course, uh, transgender people. And even if you don't know them, of course, I know a few. So today I would like to welcome my special guest. I have Jay Nice Poindaster. Of course, we got her here too from Equality, <laughs> Michigan. And also we got Jamila uh, Sade is also here with us too and of course uh, we know that Janice actually has a special guest with her as well and she'll explain that too so thank you for blessing us with your presence today of course. I appreciate it thank you for having us okay so let's start off and I, I just want to ask you lovely ladies uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so who who want to start first we're going to start with uh, Jamila oh what do you want to know yeah I just want to know a little bit about you what do you like what, you know what do you do I'm a social worker from Detroit, Michigan. I just graduated with my BSW in social work. I'm a, a resident of the city. I am, I don't like the label transgender. I just like my label as myself, living through a society. Am I on the mic right? Yeah, we're on the mic. Yeah, that, okay. that, we're trying to get this. Excuse me, people, everybody. We're trying to get all this together. at 12. Yeah, okay. So we're just trying to get this up a little bit here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And, you know, I just thought it was very important for me to be here because, you know, I'm a lot older than I look. You know, I came to my family moved to Detroit in the 70s. So I was around when it wasn't even a, the transgender word wasn't even talked about. Mm. You know, it was called transsexual then. That sounded like something from out of space. That's just <laughs> me saying it. Wow. And um, back then. It was different because it was not talked about. It was not known about. You were just a drag queen or gay. Mm -hmm. There wasn't no in-betweens. And I was lucky that I had a voice. I was really, you know, I didn't gain some weight and got older. But I was really <laughs> small. I could pass without people really knowing. you like catching the bus and going all downtown everywhere. And I think I had that to my advantage. But as you get older, you know, things change. You have to keep up and you have to fight a little bit more harder. But, um... It was scary because, yeah. you know, I've seen people get beat up. I was on the bus where I saw somebody get, you know, almost killed. And then the guy looked over at me and was like, you see that's going on? And I looked at him. I was like, if he only knew that okay. I wanted to call. You know, it's just me personally, I think I've had to fight for everything that I've gotten. It, it didn't come yeah. easy. I okay. was blessed that I had family support. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I was always a follower, not a I mean, a leader, not a follower. I'm sorry, I didn't get that right. I didn't follow behind other people. Okay, well, let me ask you this, because I, I know you from social media. Me uh -huh. and you are friends on Facebook. But Madonna brought us yeah, together. Yeah, Madonna <laughs> brought us together, because we're big Madonna fans. Right. That's what we have in common. I want to say that, um, but I want to ask you, because I know you not to like be like, I've never, like, I've gone out and been out in the club scene for a long time, mm -hmm. and I don't do it as much now, but I want to ask you, because I have never seen you out at the clubs. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Like, what is your, like, everyday thing? Are you, like, because I know that you told me you're a performer, too, but, like, do you just, like, lead a normal life? I sure do. Yeah. Quietly and peacefully. Mm -hmm. And um, I did the clubs back years ago, but I'm kind of, you know, Detroit 
I'm not putting Detroit down. You know, this is my home. But I was more, you know, like we said, Madonna mm-hmm. girl. I'm more of an 80s. I'm still an 80s prince. I'm still mm-hmm. 80s, really trapped in the 80s. I want a bar that can just do Prince and Madonna. I'll be fine. Yeah. But, um, no, I don't go out as much. I have my s- small circle of friends, and we have wine. Okay. And we might have right, a male cool. dancer once in a while. Now. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to talk, talk about the leisure stuff, but okay. I just want to know, like, what do you do, like, for yourself? What Do, do you have a profession that you do? I'm or a any? social worker. Social worker. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I, I was a hairstylist for 20 years. Uh-huh. I kind of got, you know, it looked like it was a dead end for me because I didn't mm. own the salon. I was just a, a you know, cosmetologist. Yeah. So and I he, went back to school. Go to school, I went too. to Wayne Community College, and I didn't see that many other transgender women <clears> there, and I was kind of like, wow, I'm in, I'm in here by myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw one, but... She looked like she was afraid, isolated. Yeah. You know. Okay. See, well, me, I had that mindset. I didn't give a yeah. damn. I, I'm here okay. for me. I don't care about what people are saying or who this or who that. I'm trying to get my paper. Okay, so you just basically just live a normal life. For right like, now. It's not like a club. <laughs> you're not like a club kid or anything no. like that. For right okay. now, I'm living a normal life. I need some excitement. But for right okay. Now, All right, cool. Well, we're going to talk. We're gonna come back and we're going to talk to you about okay. that, okay? But I want to talk to Janice, too, and I want to find out. I want Janice to explain to us. Like, just tell a little bit about yourself, Janice. Of course, because I know you're an activist as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and I appreciate you for being here today. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I so, it. yeah, just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you do. So, my name is Janice Poindexter, mm-hmm. and I'm the transgender specialist slash victim advocate for Equality Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I also am the vice president of communication and organizing for Trans Sisters of Color Project. Um, so, I have the honor and the pleasure of traveling throughout the country. Um, rendering supportive services to LGBTQ community members that mm-hmm. experience victimization from discrimination, harassment, unfair treatment in the housing program. It can be a situation um, where they're getting mishandled in the judicial system and yeah. need to understand the legal language as relates to our people and our people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do a lot of that work and um God has given me um, a lot of opportunities and a lot of grace, and I've been able to really work with a lot of influential people and um, people that I've established bonds and connections with um, outside of their titles. Wow. Um, and I'm very fortunate for that because I get work done with a text message or a phone call where it is I don't have to kind of go through everything yeah. and get all of that kind of hopelessness mm-hmm. because they know me as a person, not a trans woman, not an activist. There's a personal relationship there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's awesome, and I appreciate you and your work that you do, you know, Thank for the community, you. too. I and appreciate I, that. Yeah, no problem, and I know that you brought a special guest with you today, too. I did. So, so tell so us I about brought, your guest. I brought my granddaughter, Jasmine Wright, and um, as I said, working with Equality Michigan, um, we're a statewide agency, so we render services throughout the state. Um, I manage three offices in Grand Rapids and one in Holland, and I just opened one in Benton Harbor um, last month as well. Um, so once a month month I go and stay in a hotel probably for almost a week we can have Mm -hmm. and I travel you know through those regions to make sure that the um, community members are supported that they feel acknowledged Um, we made a good partnership in Grand Rapids with Mel Trotter and I run um, the all uh, all trans shelter Mm -hmm. um, for trans women um, to escape homelessness or um, violence you know we have a a lot of clients here um, Um, But Detroit particularly um, is not a very good space for shelter or for if something is going wrong with the girls. So we have to Uber the clients up to Grand Rapids um, sometimes to Mm -hmm. to really make sure that those supportive services are rendered to the best of their ability. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So I brought Jasmine. I'm sorry. (laughs) Jasmine Jasmine is my granddaughter in the community. Hey, Jasmine. Um, um, Within the LGBTQ community, um, we establish family structures Um, And that family structure really counts for a lot because those are the people that save you, that speak the real to you from making mistakes, from making errors that other people probably won't. That family structure really comes into play. So she's my granddaughter, and she also was a survivor slash client that I worked with. And um, two years ago, she was in high school, and she ran across um, a very disrespectful um, attendance 
um, kind of officer mm-hmm. at the school, right? And um, this attendance, I'll let her tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, basically, I was in class, and um, the attendant officer came in, and she told me, like, where's your uniform? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't got it on, you know. I can go get my mom. I can get it. Mm-hmm. And she basically told me that, so she started going into detail about how I came off smart to her. So since I came off smart to her, she basically came back and told me, like, you're a boy, you have this between your legs, you will never um, be a girl. Wow. Basically told me everything that... In front of the students. Yeah, in front of the whole class. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So after that, I had went and, you know, I kind of started feeling bad about myself, you know, yeah, yeah. with the hormone thing, therapy and everything. And basically, it took for, like, my grands and uh, a few other trans sisters that I have to basically build back up my confidence back to where I used to have it at. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got it taken care of due to this lady right here next to me. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I know you're pretty, like, you're in a comfortable space now, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. But how did you, in that moment when she did that in front of the, the, the classroom, mm-hmm. how did you feel? Like, were you embarrassed or, you know, just... I was. Yeah. I honestly was. And, um, it took a lot for me to keep my composure. Mm-hmm. When I was... At, at that moment, it took a lot for me to not be like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to battle yeah. you. I'm ready to go back. And, you know... Yeah. It, mm-hmm. So, I, I cried, but, you know, I'm not the type of person that cry in front of people. Yeah. So, I cried by myself. And, you know, I, I called my mama on the phone. I told my mama. Mama came, rushed back up to the school. And I had went to the office... And at the office, you know, the principal that I had, Miss um, Spryzak, she was, she was very like warm and she, mm-hmm. you know, every step of the way, she still to this day, she's still like, how you doing? How you being? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. very do you supportive. need this? Do you mm-hmm. need that? She's still to this day, still the same way. And yeah. but it was unfortunate because the attendance officer felt validated, mm-hmm. and that's what really took me by surprise is the fact that you spoke openly about her genitals, mm-hmm. about her choice, yeah. and her mom and her family met with school faculty, the mm-hmm. principal, the counselors before she started school to establish mm-hmm. the the lines mm-hmm. of respect for her, yeah. and everyone was up to date, go through a couple months, you get this one officer who just feels that they're entitled to interject their own bias mm-hmm. and choose to degrade and humiliate her right mm-hmm. in the middle of her classmates and other instructors. And you got to ask yourself the mentality behind that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For you to step out of line that much, you're here to provide a level of safety and a good environment for children. And for you to be the offender, that was shocking. Okay, yeah, I understand. And it's very disrespectful, too. Of course, when it comes to trans women and trans men, to ask them about their private parts. Mm-hmm. And that's something it, else, that's too. That's disrespectful that, for yeah. anyone. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I I could not imagine just walking up to a person and just like, oh, so what do you do in the bedroom? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. why is that okay? Mm-hmm. I've actually seen, like, some, uh, like, people online on, on Facebook, um, particularly, like, where, like, uh, some trans women would say they've gotten hit up by guys and said, well, let me see your, you know, your dick. Mm-hmm. And that's wrong, mm-hmm. you know, because you don't know. And everybody, it's like, everybody has their own thing. So it's like, you don't really know. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really disrespectful. Um, mm-hmm. And that's something that, you know, like, I think is very touchy, mm-hmm. you know, as a touchy subject or whatever. It is. Yeah. We have oh, a case yeah. in front of the Supreme Court right now where there was a trans woman by the name of Amy Stevens. She worked here at Garden City in a funeral home. And she was praised and she got uh, a raise and everything for the good work that she did. Um, Her job started throwing little hints and innuendos about Mm -hmm. her dress code, about her appearance appearance over a period of time and wind up firing her just because she's a trans woman. But little do people know that her case, so her case is b- before the Supreme Court. Right now, we all face, yeah. we all are Amy Stevens every day living wow. in Michigan mm-hmm. because Michigan is an at will state. Mm-hmm. So, by me being LGBTQ, I can mm-hmm. be fired, I can be evicted from my housing, and there's nothing that I can do about it yeah. legally because we don't have the, the non discrimination ordinance, we don't have the federal coverage. So, what so, do we have to do? 
to we've get got that. to change the law. Yes, mm-hmm. we've got. Are so, you, are are you saying that you have to disclose who you are? Like, if for example, and I was going to ask you, Jamila, is mm-hmm. that correct? Right. I was going to ask you, you're a social worker. So mm-hmm. at work, do you have to disclose that you are a trans no, woman? No, I don't. And um, what I did. <clears throat> <clears throat> Some years ago, as I changed everything, right, like my ID, okay, I did the birth certificate, I did all of that stuff, like okay, year, name change. So when people see me, they couldn't really right pinpoint that, and I'm kind of like quiet about it because mm-hmm. I don't think it's anybody's business anyway. But right. I didn't really see right. the the battle lines until I went to affirmations mm-hmm. and I was uh, uh, my internship, and I was in tears some days because I had younger people who were actually on the street prostituting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I would sit on that computer and call every homeless shelter every place oh. I could I was in tears I, one girl I think it wasn't just but besides the transgender issue was mental health issues mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. and I said she needs some help and yeah. it's like no work I'm like I want to do this but I really want to do this for the LGBT community. I want to mm-hmm. help them because I don't see the help I, and I also worked in a homeless shelter mm-hmm. in Warren Michigan I, I had transgender people calling and would ask me, well, do you have a bed for a transgender person? And I was like, I didn't know what, I'm almost in tears now. I didn't know what to, to mm-hmm. say because mm-hmm. they only want, you know, they had a section for men mm-hmm. and uh-huh. they had a section for and women. And they'll tell you if you want to come in and get help and get services, you got to take all of that off. Right, you have to be so, at the gender you were. Yeah, because see, what, what I, they what do I, that in prisons too. Mm-hmm. what I don't understand, and, and if I saw you on the street, I will not judge you. Mm-hmm. I would probably say that you are a woman. But some of Do us you don't have that advantage. Yeah, and I, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 some don't have that advantage. And I and, and I understand that. So I guess what I'm I guess what mm-hmm. I'm asking is it. I guess the transformation is it, you know do you go from a transformation from oh yeah male to, a, to female a transition it, <laughs> and and that's what and yeah. I guess that's. It takes, that's where the discrimination yeah, comes years in. Well, no, that, the know. discrimination comes People's from ignorance. just I, I, overall ignorance. People mm-hmm. feel that so, we're yeah. trying to disrupt the traditional way of life or trying to include on religion. We get a lot of hatred and discrimination based on religion. Mm-hmm. But what I always, I'm mm-hmm. always interested in having that conversation because the word says that love covers a multitude of sin. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. same grace that is sufficient for a whoremonger, a, a leper, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A, a adulteress, a thief, whatever that is. The same grace that saved you can mm-hmm. save me. Mm-hmm. And if you're telling me that it can't, then you have a problem because you're calling mm-hmm. God a liar. Yeah. And exactly. the word said that he's not exactly. the son of man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And there's no sin that is different. Here. So mm-hmm. sin, sin is sin. Yeah. Re- okay. You know, so there's no sin that is different. Well, <laughs> no, God let let, let, let me ask here. you guys this. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, when it comes to the religious aspect, of it or whatever when it says this you know like about sin do you believe that you know who you are is, is like no, do you I believe do as a, you're a sinner no I in do that not. way because no, of your because you know what I, I identity I've been through a lot in my life I mm-hmm. lived in Nigeria mm-hmm. with my mother we were I was going to Harry Ford High School my mother just wanted to move to Africa mm-hmm. she met an African man I lived in mm-hmm. London with her also and but, but I'm just what I'm just trying to say different cultures think Differently, differently yeah. I don't know if I would have survived in Africa being transgender because they have laws mm-hmm. over there that they'll hang you and kill mm-hmm. you, all kind mm-hmm. of different things going on. But people were gravitating towards me for some reason, like watching me and looking at me. And um, I even had somebody ask, "Are you a boy or a girl?" And I was just dressed just like him. Mm-hmm. But see, I always had that right, right. female um, thing, you know, that I was born with. I didn't wake up one day and go, "Oh, I want to be a transgender." Mm-hmm. I, this is too hard of a life to just say, "Oh, I want to be." Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I a, knew that's when a I was big like, misconception. I was new well. this Very when deep. I was mm-hmm. four years old. My grandmother saw it at two. I started changing at fifteen. I've always wow. been a woman. I've never have been a man. Period. I know that's right. Wow. It, oh, that's right. So it, I'm just, you know, it's, it's, awesome. and the reason why I, I'm talking like this is because I really didn't have to fight as much. And I think I was kind of in denial when I was at affirmations and I saw people coming in there going through this and going through that. I'm like, where were my glasses at? Mm-hmm. Because I was enjoying my life and mm-hmm. I was able to pass through, but not worrying about other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. if if I may, this this was probably one of the best moments I've ever had in the studio. 
video that that talks exactly to what you were just saying. Um, we had a uh, relig- uh, You guys that are listening can't see air quotes, but there are air quotes. <laughs> a religious expert um, who I literally had to explain mm-hmm. that there is a difference between someone being gay, yes, there is. someone being a cross dresser, and, gen- right. and gender, and gender exactly. dysphoria. That's right. Exactly. That's one of my and trans- questions. They are, if you look they, up they the are totally different gay, things. Totally different and he things. didn't get That's that. Right. If yeah. you look up the meaning of gay, exclusive. it is a man that is attracted to, to another man. man. Exactly. And if I'm telling mm-hmm. you that my position as trans, for me, my position was not. Um, it was it, my transition did not get encouraged, nor was the catalyst a man, mm-hmm. a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Was it to fool people? Mm-hmm. Was it to come against the status That's quo? The it was one. not. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was really about my own level of freedom there and life go. that uh-huh. I'm entitled exactly. to. That <laughs> I'm entitled to as a child mm-hmm. of God, as a mm-hmm. believer, and as a human. First, mm-hmm. I think that we we interject our own biases so much that we forget that the humanity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. in being a human and we immediately Mm -hmm. go Mm -hmm. to what we don't like and what we see fit forgetting that we are all sinners that fall short Okay, gotcha. I just love you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's, Thank that's you. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. Amen. Okay, and I, I know that uh, Jamila had said about at an, a certain age that she realized who she was. I want to know from you, Janie's, like at what age and also, you know, I, I just want to find oh, out, goodness. like, when did you realize that you were different i was i knew i knew that it was something different about me what i did not know is the way that society would would try to ostracize me and and like this is what i want people to understand that you don't you don't make a choice to be the sore thumb and the brunt of all Mm -hmm. violence and humiliation and discrimination. Mm -hmm. You don't make a choice to wake Mm -hmm. up and do that. My choice to transition and to be the person that you see in front of you, it was a position of life. My, my, My life was full of confusion because I was trying to be something that I wasn't. And I know that people probably won't understand that because for them, my very being is a choice. But for me, it's not a choice. It was not a choice it was it was figuring out how to make my mind my body match up with my mind and my soul Mm. and when I did all along that journey I was so (laughs) lost that I could not translate that to people Mm -hmm. I could not put that message in a bottle and give it to people so therein lied my confusion and all of my craziness Mm -hmm. but I never left God Um, I had a really good relationship with my with my family I had to leave them at one point because I'm a Taurus, so I'm really, I'm really <laughs> stubborn. I had to leave them and disconnect from them and really, really find myself. And when I did that and I discovered that no matter what, no matter what goes on, no matter what I can experience in this life, that the Lord still found favor in me. Mm-hmm. That changed my whole life. And that really deepened when my mom died. And I had mm-hmm. to grow up mentally, emotionally. Oh, wow. it, it was just, I was on this journey. And through that I gave my life back to Christ. Um, I really dedicated myself to my ministry. I go to greater, uh, greater, um, greater. My goodness, oh, Greater great, Emmanuel okay. Temple of Deliverance, we'll great, great. Um, under the esteemed <laughs> okay. leadership of Bishop Eric mm-hmm. Mitchell, and he helped me. He helped me really own in to what being a child of God was first. Mm-hmm. So to answer your question, do I think that? my life is a sin or do I think I need to ask for forgiveness? Yes. Because to to tap into grace, there must first be sin for grace to cover. Mm. So I am such a lover of God and a respecter of God that I would not put myself before him because he is the beginning and the end. Mm. So in that, I do humble myself and pray to him for repentance for the things that I've done wrong. I know that he has spoken against the homosexuality act Mm -hmm. so i have to be truthful in saying that 
I ask God for forgiveness for that. But my path, my who I am, the Lord has found favor in mm-hmm. that. And anybody who tries to tell me different, I would sit up and argue and strongly disagree, not offensively, mm-hmm. because I don't believe that we should argue about Christ. But how do you tell me that I don't have a place here and I don't have a place mm-hmm. in his kingdom? Okay. Mm-hmm. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Can I say one okay. thing on to that? Yeah, sure. She said some powerful things. Mm-hmm. But I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't if it wasn't for faith. Amen. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be here. Amen. Because yeah. I know I had to have somebody watching over me, and it wasn't Amen. just my mm-hmm. grandmother. Amen. And the things that I have seen, and you know, uh, when I lived in Africa, and, he, and even in mm-hmm. Detroit, you know, I transitioned like back in the ninety. I mean, the eighties when it wasn't even hurt, wasn't even that many. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of us like yeah. Melbourne Moore. It was people out there back then, but it wasn't a whole lot. I was like by myself. I felt, but you know, I I, I had God watching over me. I, you know, mm-hmm. I was an introvert. I didn't have many friends. You know, how many people like the Madonna besides me in the basement mm-hmm. singing like a virgin, whatever. Okay, <laughs> but I'm yeah. just saying, um, I had to have God watching over me. I don't think I'm I'm who I'm supposed to be. I think that God made everybody in His. We're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. This is um, a test, I believe. I don't believe in the death thing. I believe the spirit moves on. Mm -hmm. Transition. I Mm -hmm. transition. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in none of that stuff. I used to be afraid years ago. Now I'm not because I've seen things I don't want to talk about here. But, you know, I just think that we just live in a society. Everybody's against this person. Black, white, purple, green. It's just like every day I'm hearing this hate, hate, hate. Mm -hmm. And this this is what's destroying the world. And I think we need... People need to be do better and just leave people alone, mind your own business. And, mm-hmm. and the thing about the gay thing, they're not worried about how, how much mm-hmm. of a human being you are. They're worried about the sex act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Instead of learning who, the personality, yeah. how good of a person you are, yeah. how good of a person you are. They're yeah. worried about what you're doing in the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. That always, it's always, yeah. it's always that bleakers makes down to too. that. Yeah. That makes me I'm laugh, I'm more too. than that. I'm more oh. than mm-hmm. sex. I'm more than that. That's as far right. as this yep. gay That's thing right. and this and this. I ain't never had a gay man knock on my door in my life. And a lot of well, women will knock up and down like, well, you had to, they had to be gay. They had to be gay. All the men I have had come after me have been straight men. Yeah. And I've had to tell them, and I'm up front. Sometimes I don't because if I don't like you, you're not going to know. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to keep on my I'm walking on. But I'm just saying that yeah. human sexuality is very more and can we say this real Rise quick? Than what we know. Can we say this real quick Go about trans women? A lot of times they say that, you know, when a trans woman, because we're going to talk about um, about how many trans women have died, that oh, were yeah. murdered. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that a lot of times they say that they trick these men, but <laughs> no, no, they, they do. don't. That's they, what they, they don't trick That's the narrative, narrative. They can't trick a guy. But try to put that narrative Before like you leave the Bible stuff, for, the yeah. Yeah. real quick, Good. there is one line in the Old Testament. The whole, you know, man <laughs> shall not lie with another man. Leviticus, yet yeah. One line, Leviticus, Old Testament. That let's be real, nobody pays attention to the Old Testament. Um, um, anybody in this room have a tattoo? Anyone? No. Tattoo? Yeah. I yeah. My brother got yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple tattoos. Yeah. Burning in hell. Anybody? Anybody ever work on a Sunday? Mm-hmm. Anyone? Yeah. 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 Burning in hell. Yeah. Um, Children out of wedlock? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Hey, but the good news is uh, you can sell your child into slavery as long as it's two towns over, according to the Old Testament. <laughs> Well, totally this? cool. Wow. How about the pastors and the priests that that have been? Yep. <laughs> you try yep. to paint us and my community as monsters but and the these perverts and these pedophiles, mm-hmm. yeah. but we know of cases yeah. where even in the black culture, where Ooh. the uncles and the fathers Ooh, are touching the children, well, and mm-hmm. it's completely and covered. You know, you know the old joke. How do, how do you get a nun pregnant? You dress her up like an altar boy. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. You know, but we have to we have to fight these stereotypes yeah. that mm-hmm. only apply to our population mm-hmm. exactly. just because of who we are. It pisses me off. That's on. true. That's true. I, I really yep. do when so, I see that. All right. So I know we we only have we're not really we're pressed for time, but I wanted to say also because we got a cisgender. That's right. Cisgender heterosexual male here. We also got cisgender females here too. As Look well. at he was like, okay, he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, and I know, and I know that my, term, you my might brother not know Randy, the I term. love him. I want to know, like, I just want to know if you guys have any questions, please, for the transgender this is a safe women. Safe space, please. So, because I, I, you, you, you know, of course, we got a lot of lot of different things coming up to talk about. Yeah, you know, yeah. like in the, in like way down the line, but. 
I would just want to know for your from your point of view, like how do you feel about the subject matter about trans women and stuff? Not um, putting you on the spot. I just want to no, know. No, yeah, you could put me on the spot. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So the so like number one with the spirituality thing, I am not a Christian. So like it is definitely your sexuality is not a sin from where I'm coming from, no matter who you want to sleep with. Gotcha. So that's like a really number one. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And then the second thing, like in all honesty, I mean a lot a lot of my friends in the past were trans and gay just because like I I did I did a lot of drugs. I got really high and did a lot of Tina <laughs> to be a hundred percent. So I have zero bias. Man, nothing. To me, I, I'm sorry. That's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Because I did a lot of drugs and I dated a Latina. That's that's one of the no, best things did, I've ever heard. Did a lot of Tina. Oh, did a lot of Tina. Sorry, I, I, I heard I dated right. a Latina. I know, I know, I know somebody knew I was talking about. Yeah, talking about. both of those are yeah. accurate. I'm just right. saying. <laughs> so what you yeah. said is you don't you don't come with that that built in kind of oh my goodness look at them who are they my goodness yeah not not at all and then. uh if you were born a girl, you, you're a girl, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why would I ever, how would that ever better my life or change my day to ever give any hate towards a person? Mm-hmm. That's like I've always said, it's, it's like being mad because the guy in front of you or the person in front of you at Subway is ordering a meatball sub and you're ordering a club sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you ain't putting it in your mouth. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter to you. Mm-hmm. Move on. 100%. It's power and control. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's That's power and control it when is. you think about it. And this is what I tell because a lot of times um, there's issues in the communities of color. We're mm. really diving into conversations and really being truthful. And it's like like you, you cannot substantiate why you choose to love this black or this person and not that person. Mm-hmm. And I will always... I asked the NAACP when they were here. Mm. I did a, a, um, a panel discussion with them, and I told them that I questioned the integrity of your movement because you place value on certain lives Thank and not you. all. Mm. And what we have to understand, particularly as, as people of color, black people, our liberation is parallel. Yes. The same mistreatment that you receive, yes. I'm three spaces back up under mm-hmm. you because yeah. there is that that kind of stigma there well I don't have to respect her mm-hmm. as a woman mm-hmm. I don't have to do this I don't have to do that and I always tell our sisters that because your struggle is my struggle mm-hmm. I definitely lay in bed at night and see the news stations and I have six sisters I have a mom I have aunts and cousins so for me it's like no we've got to understand where our fight is in order to continue mm-hmm. the fight yeah. because it is parallel and if yeah. we don't get that if we don't really understand the point of being together and fighting together and understand where we connect and also understanding where we don't we're going to fail mm-hmm. yeah you're right all right so let me take a moment here to, just to talk to the audience for people that are listening okay think about your own gender okay it can be difficult for people who are not transgender to imagine what being transgender feels like Imagine what it would be like if everyone told you that your gender that you've always known yourself to be was wrong. What would you feel like if you woke up one day with a body that is, that's associated with a different gender? Now, what would you do if everyone else, your doctors, your friends, your family, believed you're a man, <laughs> believed you're a man and expected you to act like a man when you're actually a woman or believed you're a woman even though you've you know, always known yourself to be a man? So these are the things. You have to put yourself in other people's position. That's the whole thing. So I want you guys at home just to kind of think about that when you're judging other people, okay? Now, I do want to ask, because we talked a little bit about, um, you know, like uh, sexual orientation and also, you know, like, you know, just kind of like different, you know, like taking like they're different. So Mm -hmm. sexual orientation and also being transgender is completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, And a perfect example is like, you. and I'm sorry, I got to use Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner, oh, you know, yeah. identifies as a woman, yeah. but is attracted to women. She's yeah. not gay. She so like men. I want to talk to my trans women and ask, you know, like you guys, I want to know, like, you know, like for yourself, like a lot of times when there's trans women, a lot of times, you know, you know, you might be still attracted to men, even though you were born biologically a man and, you know, you feel like you're in a different body. 
But then at the same time, it's like, you know, you might still be attracted to men, but then you are a transgender woman who also is attracted to the opposite sex. But then it d- does that make you a lesbian at that point? Like some people are kind of confused with I that. I want to say something here on mm-hmm. that part. And I also want to hear, <laughs> I know, I know. Jasmine, Dude, I'll, I'll put it in perfect context for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm the straight middle-aged yeah. white guy in the room. Yeah. I... Caitlyn Jenner, man <laughs> or woman who used to be a man. Yeah. Is dating a uh, man who used to be a woman. A exactly, man. yeah. I have That's no idea. Cool. I have no idea how to have that conversation in today's world. That, I yeah. truly don't. Well, let me say this. Like, I'm afraid to even talk about yeah, it. Can I, can I tell you something? That for a that, the, wo- the woman, actually, I'm sorry, before you guys say anything else, the woman that uh, Caitlyn Jenner is uh, dating, beautiful. <laughs> gorgeous. Gorgeous, but used to be a man as well. Was on so, a, uh, yeah, but, she was on yeah, uh, a, a Channel 7 TV show. Yeah, yeah, so. I saw her. Okay, so I don't know who wants to talk first I want to say something about that. I have always liked it. It may ends, but it <laughs> may <laughs> That was the confusion because I was kept, you know, I was told you had to pick a, a wall. I mean, you either gay or you gay, and I said, well, pick I a must, wall, boots. I, said, I was like, well, I must just be gay, and I, yeah. but I still felt like, I, no, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. I said, I st- you know, I feel when, I, when I'm with a man, I feel like I'm a woman. And I said, this is not for me. I went to gay bars and I always felt like isolated. I'm like, there's a bunch of men in here. Where is, where my, where is my voice at? So it was different black women in the community on the west side of Detroit that helped me because I was in a land of confusion. I remember some guy stopped me. This is when I was as a boy, a teenager, you're handsome. I was like, no, I'm beautiful, honey. I'm not handsome. I'm beautiful. <laughs> you better get it right because you're not going to treat me like some man because I'm not that one. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as I got older, I said, you know what? When I, you know, I'm going to tell you something which is real scary. It was a book. I don't know where it came from. Probably my uncle or somebody. And it had, it was open and it said different sexualities. And it said transsexual. And it said a person who lives their life as the opposite sex mm-hmm. and who can pass in public and all this stuff. And I said, I said, ooh. I said, that sounds like me. But when I was like 17, I said, you know what? I said, I I, I defied everybody. I just said, I'm going to do what I want to do. I started buying a little bit of wet and wild here. And they had Wrigley's grocery, I mean, Wrigley's drugstore. Yeah. I was buying a little makeup and I just, little by little, and, and I kept saying, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I've always mm-hmm. known this. And it just, it just got stronger and stronger. But you're, you're attracted to men. Well, yeah, I need somebody strong. I need some muscles behind me. Okay. I'm already feeling I'm enough. It's not about a woman that I want. Okay. And I, I just admire and I appreciate women. I love women because mm-hmm. my mother's a woman. My sister's a woman. And I feel that I am too, but I, I, want, I respect women a lot. And I mm. just... You know, I just like men. They just give me that that masculine yeah. that I that I need. That's okay. all. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But all no right. offense to anybody else. Okay, gotcha. In the autumn, you were going to say something, right? Yeah, I wanted to touch back on. Um, what Miss Janice was saying. Um, I just want to introduce myself as my name is Autumn. Uh, I think you introduced me earlier. And I'm a strong ally of the LGBTQ community. I always have been. Um, I guess you say I'm a cisgender or I like to say bio female. Uh, I have been really involved in LGBTQ healthcare and mainly HIV research in Chicago. I've been doing that for about a decade. And I have a strong um, relationship with the house ball community in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ms. Rahi, Balenciaga, Mm -hmm. uh, Ebony. I'll be there uh, next month for a ball. (laughs) Yeah, uh, all those those houses. Um, So it really started in the 90s when I was in high school. I was privileged enough to go to a very progressive high school in Chicago, a private school where my principal was a lesbian and she had adopted like four black kids from Ethiopia and was married to a woman. Uh, my counselor was a gay man, so I always grew up with LGBTQ people and people mm-hmm. that looked out for me and were very instrumental in me coming up. And my parents were very um, liberal about it. They didn't have a problem with me um, associating with gay people or, or, I don't know, maybe being very open-minded. I was mm-hmm. always around a lot of progressive people. But really this past decade I got into it because I've been seeing a lot of conversations especially with the advent of social media around uh the liberation of black people but it seems to not include lgbtq people or Mm -hmm. same gender loving people as Mm -hmm. my brother cleo monago would like to say and i have a problem with that because as black people we have been here for 400 years we've been here since 1619 Mm -hmm. and if none of us are free you know if all of us ain't free none of us are free and I feel very strongly about including my LGBTQ or same gender loving sisters because when you look at the history of black people, people that have been 
uh, identify who have identified as gay or lesbian or transgender have been very instrumental in our liberation. Right. We would have not Always had the March on Washington if it wasn't for a gay man Always named A.R. Walker. That's yeah. right. We have Bessie Smith, who was yep. a blues singer. Okay, we've had uh, Barbara Jordan, who was mm-hmm. a politician. I could mm-hmm. go on a length Marsha P. Hughes. Henson. Mar- right. She started the Stonewall. Right, Marsha P. Was Johnson. She a trans woman of color. Exactly. Marsha, Marsha P. Johnson. Johnson. Pay for the P. Me, and pay Sylvia, it no mind, that's baby. Right. Pay Sylvia it no Rivera. mind. Sylvia, wow. Sylvia Rivera. So we've had a long history of LGBTQ people that have been uh, contributed to our liberation. Mm -hmm. So for you to try to eliminate them out of the conversation, you're dealing with an erasure of a huge part of our history as a people. So when these people like Umar Johnson come around and talk about black nationalism and he's like, I'm not for the homosexual, then you're not for black people, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, I bring to the table is strong <laughs> allyship because every all black people, my brothers and sisters, whether you're from DR, whether you're from Puerto Rico, you're Colombian, you're from Detroit, you're from Compton, oh, you're from African. Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're from Toronto, you're from Nigeria. We all, black people, we are living in perilous times, especially mm-hmm. here in America mm-hmm. under this administration. And we cannot afford to take anybody out the race or discount right. anybody mm-hmm. that's right mm-hmm. you know if you are black yeah. i am down with you especially if you are trying to progress our community mm-hmm. and our race i don't care who you sleep with what you have i don't care if you want mm-hmm. four vaginas i do not <laughs> care <laughs> this is true. you are for progressing <laughs> us as black people i am down for you and i feel that randy like i like that <laughs> 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 in, in charlottesville when, when in charlottesville when that hatred mm-hmm. bre- brews yes. yeah. they didn't say okay you're trans you're cis mm-hmm. you're, you're straight cis, right. you're this. Black. they I just they want saw. to kill yeah. your black yeah. right there's no distinction exactly yeah, right. there's no distinction exactly. and we need people to really understand that and really be willing to take that on exactly. yeah, and, right. and like really mm-hmm. dissect that because therein mm-hmm. lies that connection piece and you know what yeah. I know the first yeah. when a trans black woman is murdered the first thing I notice other straight black people say well they they must have didn't tell him. They must have been trying to fool him. But, but, but you know what? But, that makes me so angry. It's so because, I mean, it's so yeah. ignorant. I mean, right. like, it is ignorant. Our men were hung on yeah. trees. I mean, burnt. Mm-hmm. For looking at a white yeah. woman, castrated. And, all you t- and, and I yeah. mean, you got the. You know, I mean, this is a human being. She was murdered. You know, it just. I don't just I don't know. I, I said to myself, I'm always if you look at my page, I'm always fighting for the black man. I'm mm-hmm. always fighting about police brutality. But it's not reciprocated. I'm always though. fighting no, for not. them. It's it's but not. you know what yeah, I noticed? I said when not. I hear stories about trans women, they're dogging us out. Yeah. But how about this? Statistically, so, the black so. man is my number one killer. Exactly. Yeah. How about that? Mm-hmm. Mine too. Like is a really dissect woman. that for a moment. That I said I, I'm supposed to stand up and be proud and include and push back and all of these things, but the same person that I'm helping bring to the forefront and protecting is the, is one the person that turns around and I'm going to tell y'all another that. flip side. You know what I sometimes feel? I have more advantages in a white community. Mm. Because when I go into <laughs> yeah. different parts mm-hmm. of, in, in the communities in predominantly white areas, I'm, more safe spaces. I'm treated like uh, holding the doors for me. I'm treated like I just sense a feeling of, uh, it's just that I feel like they're you treat me sometimes better than my the own value. people. I, I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember now. which one of What's, you ladies said it, but you said it was people are more infatuated with what you're doing in the bedroom. I said that. Yeah. And, and that's and <laughs> that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the infatuation the of what you being, not the mind, right. It's, it's, it's it has nothing. It has nothing to do part. with mm-hmm. trans, gay, or anything. It just has to do with what you're doing in the bedroom. I and know people can exactly in Netflix. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and okay. people can't, they can't wrap they their can. minds around it. So that's where the ignorance come in uh-huh. at, is that yeah. they just can't wrap their mind around it. And that's where it lies. See, we would never get past this point if people, if they can't look past what you're doing in the bedroom, then no, they're not going to look you straight in the eye. They're going to look, they, it's the imagination mm-hmm. behind yeah. you. They're never going to look you straight really in the eye. It's the imagination. They want to join. Yeah, what's half the, the time. <laughs> <laughs> half the time. <laughs> what's the young man, the young man that actually was starting the uh, Black Lives Movement? The black guy that was always in the front when they had Ferguson and everything. He, oh, I know. He, I actually, know. he actually was out there in the front line all the time. They Ferguson. I know who you're um, talking about, but I can't And Baltimore as well. Well, Black Lives Matter. And, yeah, yeah, and then they found out that he was gay, and, and there was a lot of people that turned against him. Right. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and said, well, I'm not going to follow him because he's a faggot. That's so stupid. Yeah. Because all black And he all... was the person that was out on the front line like, hey, we right. need to stop killing our this people. This is why we're not making yeah. it as a race of people. Because yeah. we so have divisive. A, we was have a, a, we, it was a D, just... D-Ray or D? I can't remember I his name. I remember. Yeah. I have to look his name up. Yeah. Signals bad out here. Yeah. But we're so divisive and I feel like all black lives matter, just not cisgendered, heterosexual male ones. And that's what I'm noticing is like when we divert the narrative away from what straight black men are going through nobody Mm -hmm. wants to hear it because me being a bio woman cisgendered woman i get a lot of yeah. Can we, is this a P, is this a family show? Can oh I, no, you can cuss. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know you were. Yeah, you can cuss. Whatever you want. Yeah. I, I get a lot of shit too for being a feminist, for being a black yep. woman who's trying mm-hmm. to stand in her truth and to fight for equality. Because I have to deal with white folks, and That's I have right. to deal with sexism in my community too. This wow. is why we need to have more conversations around intersectionalism. That's right. and some of you mm-hmm. all have probably heard intersectionality. That's excuse right. me. Mm-hmm. Some of you all have heard this. Uh, theory that has been developed by this brilliant sister out of UCLA Law School, mm-hmm. Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw. She's a law professor out there. She came up with it about 30 years ago in the late 80s. Back in the day, she said she was too woman mm-hmm. for the pro-blacks, and she, the, the feminists didn't want to hear the black shit either. Mm-hmm. So she came up with this theory of intersectionality that I live within two identities. I yeah. can My femininity can coexist with my blackness, that's and right. that's mm-hmm. always been the forefront of my identity. Mm-hmm. And we just have to have more. I think a lot of it has to do with black people uh, we've been so oppressed through the mm-hmm. years. And so mm-hmm. some of us, it feels good to make somebody else feel yeah. bad mm-hmm. because we it's feel bad. It's almost popular. It's mm-hmm. almost popular. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. have this hierarchy mm-hmm. in the black community where cisgendered black men are at the top and they want to keep everybody else down through homophobia, mm-hmm. sexism, mm-hmm. and colorism. Mm-hmm. They're thinking that mm-hmm. way because they know they're, they're at the bottom Talk of this. <laughs> exactly. In the, in the greater scheme they're of things, cis, cisgendered black men are at the bottom compared because to Because if you're looking into the white mm-hmm. media, who are the stars? RuPaul, different black Gay Billy Porter people mm-hmm. are being yeah. on the top of the line in the other you know, and that's yeah. fine but mm-hmm. the population that's being murdered in the streets yes. every day is the mm-hmm. black trans woman exactly. yeah, Kelly true. our sister Kelly she was killed in December of 2018 and she was killed by a black pastor mm-hmm. here in the city of I Detroit remember that. and I, remember that. I go to on the, the court case. oh yes, yes. Oh, yes. On and I go to the court case, and I know the family. I love Miss Williams. I keep in contact with them, follow up, make sure they're included. Mm-hmm. I also arranged a town hall in the summer with the elected officials, the Department of Justice, and everyone. I invited Miss Williams because I don't want people to forget Kelly mm-hmm. because that needs to be known. Say that, her name. That, Say that, her name. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That this was, this was a young woman who was out working, sex working to survive because she needed to provide for herself. Mm -hmm. And here you have a pastor who's Mm -hmm. a registered CPL holder that shoots her and he substantiates the shooting and the killing of her by, oh, when I let her in my car, I thought she was a woman because I seen her flailing her arms and I thought she needed some help. But what we're still trying to identify was when you found out that she wasn't a woman, why did she have to die? Yeah. That's the thing. Like, what mm-hmm. did her identity, her gender, her sexuality do to you to make her have to die? Yeah. And here you are. You drop your daughter off at daycare in Southfield. And this is an hour before you have to be to work. And you're on the corner of Six Mile and John R. And you say that you didn't know that this yeah. was a place where sex work took place mm-hmm. or where transgender <laughs> women perform <laughs> sex work. But you also say in your statement that you attended services at Wings of Love. And there are people that have not <laughs> stepped down in the city of Detroit nor the state of Michigan that know what goes on on Six Mile and Woodward and Six Mile and John R. Oh, baby, we already know what goes exactly. On there. Exactly. Everybody does. I mean, <laughs> yeah. even you know? if you live out of and, town, you probably yeah, know what goes there. So you to be you honest, know? and be honest with you, there was many nights actually when I was uh, like maybe 17, 18 years old. I was going to club numbers, mm-hmm. and I remember the the transgender women walking mm-hmm. up and down Woodward talking to the cops. Yeah. Like, the cops were out there just talking to them. So and how I'm like, do you... What, y'all don't know what goes <laughs> down over here. But yeah, how do you... Know. How are yeah. you a pastor and you yeah. attended services yeah. here and you, your roots are here? You've never yeah. lived anywhere but the city of Detroit. Yeah. You did not He's know that. It's a lie. Oh, but that's but that's how, how it is a lie. How about yeah. this? <laughs> face After he shot and killed her, he went to work, took a shower, changed his clothes, and wow. called the police an hour and 20 minutes later. Jesus what? Christ. So she did nothing to... <sighs> I, I don't... I didn't even hear about the story but she did nothing to him? 
nothing. She not, was not trying out, to rob, not trying to do nothing. He wasn't trying to defend himself. She was out trying to make money. He was out for a good, somewhere between his desire for a good time yeah. and letting her in the car. She had to die, and we still don't know why. Wow. And the case is still in the court Where right is now. he? Okay. He's, well, so with those, <laughs> with the laws and the protections not being as strengthened as they are, mm-hmm. he was able to go to the judge to get a reduction in bail and get put on a tether. And the judge agreed with him and said, well, oh, we don't Lord. see why he's a mm-hmm. menace to society or a threat to society. But you you don't understand yeah. that there is a person, that a family mourning loss mm-hmm. of life yeah. here. Yeah. On a murder charge? Somebody. Are you yeah. kidding I'm me? I'm telling what? you. People feel like 40 years in prison for selling heroin. <laughs> I feel like those are of you drunk? listening to but this. this. I had a, a trans woman client oh, who was shot in the gas station hmm. on Seven Mile and Greenfield at the mobile gas station last year in, in broad mm-hmm. daylight. It's a green light gas station, mm-hmm. so there's real time That's recording so going on managed by the police. She gets shot around between 3 and 3.30 in the afternoon. We have all the footage and everything. Mm-hmm. We get to the judicial system, and we're again smacked across the face and the only way that the judge could really charge and make the charges stick by charging the offender with ethnic intimidation because we don't have discrimination laws oh here my in Michigan. God. That's, that's, crazy. that's terrible. I feel like the people listening to this are missing the full effect of yeah. all the air quotes yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and exactly. my thing, you know exactly. my thing is like, you don't have out? to agree. <laughs> you don't have to agree. You don't have to get in bed. You don't have to mm-hmm. marry me. You don't have to promise me the moon of stars. Mm-hmm. All of that is fine to me. But when you intentionally take those feelings and those biases and and, and Mm -hmm. intentionally make it hard for me every day in health care, in stability, in access, in education, all of these things Mm -hmm. that you deliberately try to cut me out of but still tell me to go make it. Mm, okay. It's kind of like what That's happens with yeah. black people on a whole. People criticize exactly. us. Like, how come you guys can't do this and this? Exactly. Hello, slavery. Hello, Jim Crow. Hello, mm. segregation. But you still expect me to be at the same level. They still as... take them taxes out my check. Exactly. No, we equal there. Exactly. I think Roland <laughs> yeah. Martin said we're like 200 years behind white people because of all the oppression. That, but people still expect us to. Ha- people still expect us to achieve at the same rate, mm-hmm. even yeah. though we have been so marginalized and so yeah. oppressed. Yeah. And it's called That's a dollar true. green. If we knew uh, how to invest in the communities with those dollars that we spend on um, Popeye's chicken and all these other things, we would have some money in this But the dollar is one thing. That's just economics. We're talking about a a quality of life here. We're talking about just plain and simple respect off the gate. You gotta Mm -hmm. respect me before you learn Mm -hmm. how much money I got. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, that's the point that I'm just saying about if we keep our money in Mm -hmm. the community and know how to make it to where it helps us. But how are we solving the violence Mm -hmm. and the murder? And you know what? This is... They have a, there's a lot of them people like that sound like a sociopath. Yeah, this is definitely a conversation that we can <laughs> continue to have, <laughs> and we're definitely going to do this again. You, we're actually going to get all together again and tie this conversation. Um, okay. I do want to say this real quick before we actually get out of here today. Um, for the people that are watching, they have children mm-hmm. that are you know like saying, "Mom, Dad, I'm different." Yeah. And if um, you I don't know say, what to do with them, call me. Did you hear about the court case that's going on right now where there is a mom yeah. and dad that's fighting against the each other? Boy, yeah, girl. so the boy feels like he's a girl. I mm-hmm. think it's, is it the, yeah. the dad actually Doesn't is okay want, with it? No, he's not. No, he's not okay. The mom is okay with it, but the mom, the dad yeah, is the not. Parent. So I want to ask you guys real quick because we got to get out of here soon. Um, what age was it when you guys realized that you were <laughs> transgender? And let me ask you this. And I want to say a shout out to T.S. Madison because T.S. Madison said that you should wait until you're like 18 to actually start altering your body. Is this bitch well, recording? So, <laughs> but that's is for this her. bitch recording? Is that, it live, that, whore? That's, <laughs> that's, that's for her. Yeah. I want to yeah. be clear. I want to be clear uh-huh. that T.S. Madison mm-hmm. spoke for T.S. Madison. Yeah, just for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because T.S. Madison is not living the reality of my girls here in the city of oh, Detroit. Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, where there's, again, we got to be careful where we interject our own biases. Mm-hmm. D- you know, for her, yeah. 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 it was good she and it made sense to start at 18 and that's a that's a a, a good argument, but for everyone else, it might be imperative. This is to start a life earlier. and death situation. You That's can't right. choose no, between is. 18 mm-hmm. and 16 and 17. You got to choose to either die or live or, or be right. unhappy. I um, didn't care what anybody thought. I, my grandparents, uh, you know, being gay was a bad word in the house. Okay, mm-hmm. 
I broke the doors down because I have a cousin <laughs> that's gay. He was accepted because of me, you know, riding that track, letting other people be okay to be who they are. Because my family, if you said the gay word, it was just like a, a ABC matinee movie. <laughs> they were watching because this was the 80s. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I always was out because I walk different. I talk different. I'm like yeah, a so, girl. So I couldn't hide it. But what age do you think? Like, I mean, if, um, if you feel 16. like... sixteen. Yeah. 16, I wanted to start off with wanting to be beautiful. Okay. And I got educated myself of what I really was going yeah. through. Yeah. But then I had a neighbor who stopped me. She said, I know you said, she said, wait a minute. She said, Mother Nature made a fuck up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. She said, you a girl. I said, what? <laughs> oh, honey, we're going to go to Red Lobster. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. So that was my Aunt Cookie, and she was actually my savior. Mm-hmm. She kind of helped. Mm-hmm. She, Shout out to Aunt she Cookie. Helped yeah. okay. she was okay. Rest in peace to Aunt okay. Cookie. She was my neighbor, but she was watching. You know, she was like, Madea. Yeah. She was okay. watching, and, and she just taught me how to do a checkbook. She taught me about school. She taught oh, me how to drive right. a car. And she taught me things that my family wasn't giving it to me because my family wasn't telling me these things. She taught me. She said, don't you go anywhere with a man because you'll be under a carpet or a rug or something. Mm. So I would walk down the streets to Detroit getting all this attention, but guys would look at me. I'm like, what you looking at? <laughs> and I would get the number and put it away, but I would never talk to anybody. I kind of stayed to myself. And um, I'm happy on who I am. I, You know, I'm... I'm I'm knowing that yeah. this sounds so sad that we still have to fight to be who you are, but you know what? I'm proud that I made this, you know, that I'm being me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Because you know I, I can know that I lived awesome. in this life and I'm being able to express who I wanted to be, yeah. and I'm happy with it. And I appreciate awesome. you, too. Because you know what? And this girl, this girl, she, Jamila, she has a lot to tell. And, of course, Janice, I appreciate you. We got, mm-hmm. You got a lot. Jasmine, I got to hear your story. So we're going to do this again, and I want you to come back. For sure. Long I really do appreciate it. No snow. I, 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 I know. We're going to we go, we go do it before it starts snowing. I want to let your yeah. listeners know if there is anybody who's being victimized, yep. who's being unfairly treated, um, please reach out to me. I take it as a privilege to help um, defend and help bring acknowledgement to these issues. My phone number is 313-537-7000, extension 112. Yes. Or you can look on Equality Michigan's webpage or look for Trans Sisters of Color Project as well. Yes, indeed. Awesome. Okay, well, I thank you guys for being here today, okay? And I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our guests, of course, Janice, Miss Rahi, of thank course, you. but we do the point Esther That's on that right. too. Like and also say. Jamila Shade. <laughs> Jasmine, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you it. All. And thank definitely you for inviting me. Thank, <laughs> thank, you thank you for imparting you. imparting your knowledge on us as well. Of course, you know, the conversation will continue. We're gonna do this again. And because of that, I honestly uh, think we will grow as people. And thank That's you right. so much. Amen. Um also thank you to my co-host too. We got Randy. We also got Autumn, and we got Crystal. Thank you so much. I couldn't have done this without Thank you guys. You. Appreciate it. And all the listeners, we appreciate you. And if you would like to contact us about our show, if you got any questions the next time we do this again, please email us at wetalklifetoradio at gmail.com. And with that, I'd like to leave you guys with the transformation. No matter our differences, we should always champion our similarities. And from there, you'll find that we're not much different at all. Amen. Peace, at all. Peace to all of you guys, and I love you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye. Talk to you. That was super dope. Great show. Uh-oh. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, a sponsor. Sponsor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Let's do this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we got so we got so deep into the to the conversation. <laughs> See, I'm not just the pretty face behind thank the you, mic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure I get this money. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, guys. Get your coin. And today's show, of course, was sponsored by Jet Eye Management. Jet Eye Management, of course, for all your property management needs, please call them at 313-458-1321. And that's the crazy thing. That's my favorite number, 3121. Uh-oh. So you guys all make you sure you're all yeah, Exactly. For all the Prince fans, too. Awesome. Yep. Jet Eye Management, 313-458-1321. For all your property management needs. And I'm sorry about that. I just, yeah, the conversation was so deep. I love you guys. All right. Happy well, birthday to all the Scorpios. Thank you, Dave. Podcast Detroit. God yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great show. Yes. This yes. is awesome. Yeah. That was a great show, guys. I'm actually going to take a picture of everybody in here yeah. real quick. Send it to